At 38,000 feet, the sky closed. Four F-35s slid inward in perfect formation, sensors silent, geometry exact, the kill box already drawn around a single blip on their fuse displays. Below them, alone in the high blue void, the J-20 kept climbing. No warning tones, no missile calls, just a tightening cage built from data and distance. The American pilots believed the math was finished. The Chinese pilot felt the air thin and pulled harder into the climb. Four jets against one, and only one aircraft was still gaining altitude. The J-20 was already near the ceiling when the first geometry warning appeared. Not on any sensor, not through any tone, but in the numbers the Chinese pilot trusted more than his instincts. Climb rate was easing despite full reheat. 37,000 feet gave little forgiveness. Each extra thousand feet demanded disproportionate thrust. The air thinned into numbers rather than substance, lift turning mathematical instead of physical. The pilot leaned forward, eyes locked onto the panoramic display, showing a silent constellation of data fed from off-board sensors. There was no reason he should see threat contacts yet. And yet the net had already begun to close. Four fused tracks bloomed at the outer edge of the awareness sphere. Not bright radar returns, but shadow placeholders formed from distributed sensing. Infrared telescopes, passive RF listening posts, and orbiting Q assets. The Americans were doing what they did best. Stealth on stealth interception. No one would light a radar until someone had to die. The F-35 flight moved as a single organism. Two aircraft high and wide, two lower and tight. The formation crafted to compress escape vectors without breaking mutual sensor support. They did not rush. Speed betrayed geometry. Instead, they drifted inward, allowing the trap to build itself around taunt. He J-20's upward spiral. From their cockpits, nothing looked dramatic. Just quiet sky, just smooth vector shifts. Each American pilot saw not a threat, but a probability corridor shrinking into solvability. Single contact, slow relative climb, minimal maneuver margin. The kill math said the fight was already biased. Inside the Chinese cockpit, the pilot's breathing stayed even. He felt the intercept more than he saw it, a subtle tightening of options as every slight heading change seemed to echo back through the track projections. He turned his head slightly, scanning empty sky. Nothing visible, but he knew. Stealth had not erased the enemy. It had simply hidden his face. The J-20 stayed nose high, climbing into the thinner blue above. He resisted the urge to accelerate to dash speed. Burning fuel now meant arriving at the ceiling without energy to maneuver. Patience mattered more than velocity. The onboard computer updated the projected intercept cones again. Four narrow wedges now intruded deeper, overlapping almost directly ahead. No warning tone sounded. That silence was the danger. Because at this range, missiles wouldn't announce their launch. They would simply exist. Below, the American formation adjusted altitude bands with disciplined symmetry. The two lower F-35s crept upward to bracket the J-20's probable descent vector. The two higher fighters arced outward to cover walkout turns to either horizon. The box was nearly complete. Missile parameters silently validated. Still no one fired. Protocol restrained the finger more than instinct. The American mission commander confirmed the order with a calm internal click. Hold geometry. Force maneuver. The F-35s weren't chasing the Chinese jet. They were waiting for physics to do the killing. Up ahead, the ceiling pressed closer. The J-20 pilot felt the engines thrumming hard, or as thrust became weight rather than climb. His vertical velocity ticked lower, despite pushing everything the machine had. The trap considered him boxed. He saw something in the projection overlay that changed his breathing rhythm at last. There was a narrow spiral lane opening above the right-hand pair of F-35s, a small temporal mismatch where their altitude separation lagged a few seconds behind predicted pacing. 
a sliver of empty sky. It wouldn't remain open long, but for now, for a heartbeat, there was space to climb into. The window wasn't large enough to fly through cleanly. It never would be. Opportunities between stealth formations were always measured in seconds, not miles. And this one was already dissolving as the American fighters adjusted their altitude bands. The J-20 pilot didn't wait for perfection. He tipped the nose two degrees starboard and eased the burners to maximum rated climb thrust. Not dash power, not combat surge. The thin edge where acceleration fed altitude without draining maneuver reserve. The aircraft responded reluctantly. 38,000. 39. The climb rate sagged, but didn't die. Across the invisible cage, the F-35 formation detected the change almost instantly. Sensor fusion flagged the deviation as trend departure. The maneuver didn't break geometry, but it bent timelines. And bending timelines was dangerous. Two F-35s rolled inward to tighten the corridor. The upper right fighter pushed slightly nose down, preparing to convert altitude into forward closure if the J-20 attempted to slip through the rising gap. Beneath them, the lower pair increased climb rates, beginning a vertical squeeze that would seal the vacuum from below. From any single cockpit, the picture felt controlled. From the network's perspective, the solving problem grew less certain. The J-20 pilot watched the closing funnels like rotating transparent blades cutting across his projected path. He angled the climb a fraction left to keep his thermal signature merged against cold ski. E rather than the sun's flare, a trick learned in high-altitude IR mask training, the goal wasn't invisibility, but delay. Muddy track confidence long enough to move the intercept intersection point. Seconds mattered. A thin vibration pulsed through the seat as the engines pressed higher RPM cycles to maintain climb efficiency at the thinning boundary layer. Fuel flow surged. Still no missile warnings. The silence stretched tight. Because silence meant decision time remained. One of the upper F-35s slipped from spectral neutral into pure infrared tracking mode reading the J-20's heated exhaust arcs as faint stars against void, while staying electronically dead to avoid alerting any defensive logic. The Chinese jet's tail numbers weren't visible from here. The pilot existed only as a glowing vector above empty sky. Missile envelopes began to align into shaded projections on American helmet displays, yet no firing permissions appeared. The mission commander waited for certainty. Doctrine demanded killing probability beyond a predetermined threshold. The algorithm did not yet show comfort. Below, the lower F-35 pair entered contrail altitude, vapor flicking along wing roots as they clawed upward toward the J-20's belly hemisphere. The vertical trap was closing. The Chinese pilot felt his moment narrowing. He evaluated escape options without sentiment. Dive. Sacrifices altitude advantage entirely. Creates chase scenario doomed to rear aspect missile shots. Flatten climb. Stabilizes energy but leaves geometry intact. Delay equals defeat. Brake turn hard left. Bleeds lift margin. Possibly stall onset. Risky at ceiling levels. The only option remained the one no doctrine chart ever liked. Steepen and commit. Push into the ceiling where sustained control disappeared. Gambling the aircraft's high alpha authority could outrun the intercept math better than pure energy retention ever could. He selected manual control mode, easing flight computers out of conservative stall limit governance. The J-20's nose rose another five degrees. Everything in the cockpit grew heavier as lift margins thinned. The engines surged angrily working against physics now rather than cooperating with it. The climb rate dove, then steadied into a barely positive gain. 40,000 feet and climbing. Inside the F-35 formation, the data reacted with unease. Solution confidence dipped. Two fighters accelerated, one rose higher than planned. The symmetry of the trap fractured into reaction, 
subtle enough for crews to justify as optimization, but enough to disrupt the perfect compression for a few crucial seconds. Sensor overlays updated again. The spiral lane flashed, once slightly wider than before. It was the opening the J-20 needed. But using it meant committing to a maneuver near the limits of controllable flight, where there would be no second chance. The pilot leaned forward against the G-pressure and whispered under his breath, Now! The J-20 surged into the thin ceiling air like a blade driven upward into resistance. Manual flight control stripped away automated margin protections. The aircraft now obeyed muscle and instinct rather than software safeties. The pilot held the climb angle beyond what performance charts recommended, riding the edge where controlled lift blurred toward aerodynamic doubt. The altimeter ticked past 41,500 feet. The climb rate shuddered near zero. Below, the F-35 formation reacted, not with panic, but with accelerated convergence. Two fighters burned hard to pull above the Chinese jet's tailplane, aiming to cap the climb. The lower pair surged into the Chinese fighter's underside cone, expanding their missile solution wedges. This was the kill moment. All four sensor fusion matrices overlaid the same three-dimensional box around the J-20. The intersections lined up. Missile tones prepared to sound across American helmets. One authorization threshold remained, Ned. The problem was thermal geometry. The J-20's climb profile had moved it directly into a solar IR wash corridor, the narrow zone where the sun's glare erased clean heat discrimination. Against the bright upper atmosphere disk behind him, the aircraft's exhaust signature smeared into sensor uncertainty. The effect wasn't stealth. It was chaos. Track confidence dipped. Not lost, but degraded. Enough to stall firing permission. The kill gate hesitated. At the same instant, the aircraft reached the upper boundary, where air density could no longer support sustained angle of attack flight without loss of control. Everything reduced to seconds. One F-35 attempted to regain IR clarity by sliding off axis, pitching outward to isolate the J-20 against darker sky. But that manoeuvre punched a gap between the upper intercept plane and the lower clamp. A sliver of vertical real estate reappeared. The Chinese pilot felt control loosen. Stick response turning rubbery as airflow thinned almost to nothing. This was past the comfort line. Most trainers would command immediate descent. He committed upward anyway. Burners screamed, pouring raw thrust into rarefied air that gave almost no resistance. The aircraft floated more than climbed now, but floating moved him through the gap faster than logic allowed. The J-20 slid between expanding intercept volumes like a stone skipping a closing net. For three heartbeats no solution existed. Missile tracks recalculated helplessly as geometry decoupled faster than guidance algorithms could repair. Then the J-20 was above the box. Vertical separation snapped positive. The American formations stabilized too late. Their optimal firing cones collapsed into useless projections behind them. Only now did warning tones flicker uselessly inside the Chinese cockpit. Seekers painting sky where the aircraft no longer was. He rolled off the climb, nose drifting forward into shallow cruise descent to regain aerodynamic authority. Altitude peaked just shy of 44,000 feet. The silence broke. The trap had failed. Four of the world's most advanced fighters fell away beneath him, unable to realign without spending the fuel and altitude margin they had already banked, a cost the mission parameters refused. The American pilots watched the projections fade away. No curses. No disbelief. Just acknowledgement. The numbers had slipped. Inside the J-20 cockpit, the pilot relaxed his grip for the first time in minutes, but he did not celebrate. Because survival in the modern sky did not require triumph, only escape. And escape had been purchased on the last available margin between physics and information. The J-20 settled into thin, quiet air above 43,000 feet, engines backing down to a conservative military setting as true airspeed stabilized. 
The cockpit slowly shed the sense of compression that had haunted it through the climb. Control response returned to something solid. The aircraft no longer floated. It flew again. Behind him, the battle dissolved without ceremony. The four F-35 stabilized at their altitude bands, each pilot checking fuel states, thermal margins, and mission clocks. The geometry no longer favored pursuit. To re-establish a firing solution would require altitude trades and high burn chases that the engagement rules specifically forbade. In modern air combat, the trap was the fight. Once it broke, the mission was over. The formation commander transmitted the disengage vector in silence. The jets peeled away into safe separation lanes, climbing and descending into stack spacing that resembled nothing more than routine training traffic. No missile launches to report, no damage assessments required. Only one line would populate the post-mission ledger. Target escaped engagement envelope. Across the stratosphere, the Chinese pilot leveled off and eased the aircraft back toward fuel-efficient flight. He replayed the encounter in his mind with disciplined detachment. He had not outflown the Americans. He had outlasted their geometry. He knew the truth that training emphasized, but mythology concealed. Stealth contests were not won by surprise alone. They were won by who forced the other to solve a harder problem. The J-20 had climbed into uncertainty, and uncertainty had bought survival. He transmitted the coded mission signal to command. Nothing more than altitudes, timestamps, and maneuver logs compressed into encrypted packets. No language of victory. Only proof that the aircraft and pilot had escaped a four-ship net, using nothing but spatial timing and thermal coincidence. Hours later, Debrief rooms on both sides of the ocean would pass the same silent data. American analysts would note how the solar wash corridor degraded infrared tracking fidelity and delayed firing confidence just long enough to fracture the intercept planes. Chinese engineers would study manual flight boundary manipulation and thrust management charts, refining envelope procedures beyond what today's flight computers preferred to allow. Both sides would come to the same conclusion though neither would say it aloud. The age of dominance had narrowed to seconds. Neither speed nor stealth alone ruled the sky anymore. Information did, and information was an imperfect weapon. The J-20 crossed its recovery corridor just before dusk, thinning cloud layers glowing under the falling sun. The pilot felt fatigue settle into his shoulders as the adrenaline drained, not exhaustion of fear, but of sustained discipline. When the gear came down and the runway grew out of the haze, no ground crew knew how close that aircraft had come to vanishing above the clouds. They saw only a clean recovery, a routine landing, another sortie completed. But in the silent space above 40,000 feet, a verdict had already been right. A ten, four aircraft had entered the box. Only one jet had climbed away and the world's most advanced weapons had learned something uncomfortable, not about defeat, but about limitation.